Watch her. So I'm on the only swim left <laughs> on this entire area of the lake. Last night when I left it, there was one car in the car park. Those lads over there that are taking busway one and two. This morning there's five. Four more arrived after dark last night because I left after dark. As you can see and hear and feel, we have the compactor. It's a terrible machine. It's uh, a great swim this because of this wall, it's quiet. You've got access to this area, etc, etc, but unfortunately we have that at the moment as well. So, last night fish were showing um, in front of the swim, just up here, 40 yards up. And this is where I'm going to be putting my baits. Uh, it's comfortable, I can catapult from here. I'm not allowed past that post, basically. Um, I can cut, walk, walk past this tree here to cast, but that's it. Um, so. I don't want to be making a load of noise really, um, so I think I'll be catapulting my baits in rather than spawning them out. I don't really need to spawn them out. Um, it's easy enough to mark there in front of that swim. You can actually see the swim from here, the front of it. It's only 40 yards, just past that tree that's hanging out. So not too far up, two rods, one literally down here, but up there of course, and another one just further out and then scattering a bait. The marginal slope here, of course because of the island it's only six feet here, six foot here, but then it slopes down into 11, 12 out there. That slopes down and that slopes down. But fish were showing in this area last night quite a lot and uh, I've already seen one show out there this morning. No choice, um, if I'd have got to the point swim this morning I don't think I want, would have wanted to fish it I think I still would have wanted to come around here I certainly didn't want to go in no carp bait so I got the swim that I wanted actually <laughs> there you go all sorted and as you can hear it's nice and quiet here <laughs> so the ducks uh, saw the seagulls and came over but by the time the ducks got here it was all over with um, so today, I thought, I've done this before loads of times, just recently, I haven't been doing it. So this is my little bait bucket, as you can see, it sort of dissolves, it also soaks into the bait the longer you leave it, of course. So you see where all those ducks are, well, that's where my bait is, and that's where my two rods are. Both of them are on these little sweet shop, high vis pop-ups, snail ones, so they're multicoloured. I do like them. I've caught quite a few fish on them this year. Um, I'm getting low, so I've got to get in touch with Nick today actually, because I've got an order coming, which is probably going to be sent real soon, so I'm going to get my answer good. I think it's not too late to get them included. Right, time to put a kettle on and have a chocolate donut. Chocolate rim donut. With chocolate pieces all over it. Yeah, I've got four of them. It's really bad, I know, but yeah, I bought all four. So the workmen are behind me, and I just shouted up to them, because you get to know them, coming through the gate, coming here, you yeah. know. I just shouted to them, can you keep the noise down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they've finished this bit now, so it won't be too long before all this bank is open, and then we'll see. Mm, it'll be busy, I doubt if I'll be able to get in and swim. <laughs> well those ducks have stop diving all over the baited area and um, they were really trying but they can't get down far enough they're just not built for it they do learn though they can get down to sort of five six feet some of them but yeah i mean eight nine ten twelve coots can do it though but well i'm not worried about the coots so not much of a wind today very light southwesterly um so yeah hobson's choice isn't it much as anything else. I didn't have a choice. It was this swim, the bay, or go home. Uh, and there's only uh, one, two, three, it's four swims, three, four swims left in the bay, and one, and this one. So yeah. It was me thinking yesterday that nobody was going to come down tonight, um, because, you know, well, it's gone a little bit quieter, eh? Um, obviously, we've got the pile driver up there, the crane, the marker crane, it's 
Doe nog wat. That's not so bad. Um, wind's coming in. It's starting to push more from the west. Um, I could do with a nice big westerly today, couldn't I? I'm straight in here. So. Yeah. I'm cosy, I'm happy. Um, just put another half bucket out, so that's a kilo of bait has gone out. Um, bait soaked. I'm happy with it. Ducks are scouting around again, but again, by the time they got here, it's all over. I've had my time putting my bait out. The trouble is with these 18 mils and a cat pole, they do spread a bit. So you have to kind of really keep a close eye on, on where it's all going. Um, so that you, you know what I mean? Luckily for me, it's all going pretty much where I want So, the last thing we could do with that on here is like diving ducks in a nightmare, especially in shallower waters. <sighs> Don't even get me started. Right. Weather's not too bad, wind is coming down here. It's quiet down here. All the lines are out over there. With any luck, we'll now have one.
And it's a real nice one. Right. Some water. Bank here is a little bit slopey, so uh, I've got to get something underneath this. Perfect. Lovely common. Um, every time I get a run here, put some on the rod fast as you like. But I've got to say, when I've got them on, I'm just bricking it. I really am. This is a fat, healthy, beautiful common. Fish in the future. Goodness me, fish are now. I'm going to need some more water. A few hook marks, old hook marks. I'll treat the cards before I try to put it back. Let's just get you looking pristine. There you go. 27 pounds and two ounces. Happy days. <laughs> this was the swim I wanted when I saw all those fish topping here last night. I thought, I'll get down there and I'm in with Stephen. That's a beauty, isn't it? It's common, it's exactly the same, both sides. Happy days. It's dead weight. Small head, huge shoulders on it. There you go. Effort equals success. The fish early on. Let's get a little bit more bait out there. Get that right hand rod out. That was a deeper water one. Brilliant, eh? Well chuffed. There you go. I won't bother taking pictures, I'll just take them off the film. It's just a lot quicker, isn't it? Look how fat it is. Legs up. That was a lot bigger than I thought it was when I saw it in the water. But the way it fought, definitely 27 pounds. <laughs> Happy days. I do love it when it goes right. It's my last day this week as well, so, you know, last chance to try and get something together. All right. Um, I always get a little bit tizzwazzy when I'm um, getting fish, you know. But this is my tackle box. <laughs> i got rig tie and kit in here, uh, everything I need really. Um, ready side rigs in here, of course. Uh, I whipped up four or five last night, but if I need to, I can tie them on the bank. Um, one of these with me, which I seem to get out constantly. Uh, I'm not going to reuse this rig, I just want to see the condition of it. Yeah, point's gone, right over. Um, I didn't give that fish any welly, I never welly the fish, but it was a sliver of skin on the inside of the mouth that it was hooked through. So, yeah. <laughs> you can't always rely on them being, you know, nailed. 100% can you? I think it's best to take it easy. I have my clutches set fairly light and um, 
you know, I'll just let them run against it. And obviously the longer they're on, the more, the more chance there is of you losing it. So you kind of have to plan a bit, you know. But uh, yeah. So look, I, I tried those last night. Take one or two. It's a nice new fresh rig. Real simple little combi. Nothing complicated. You don't need a weight that big for a 12 mil pop up, but I like to overweight them. This is my um, semi fixed running rig as well. So there's the, the running part of it. The bead to stop. And all you do is take a leader. Well, we've got the noisy brothers back and their diggers. <laughs> you know what, I don't care. It's the sweet sound of that bite alarm. Um, and now we've got the... Uh, it's not just the vibration it makes when it's compacting the ground. It's this thing that happens in your ear. Hold on. I might... I say might... Just recently I was working very noisy atmosphere. And when I walked in, they gave me these. So it's possible. Hold on. I've got to take that off with this. Hold on. That's one. I'm not sure it makes a lot of difference. It certainly sounds funny when you're talking. I can still feel it. <laughs> but it's the sweet sound of that bite alarm. Going off, isn't it? You know? If it was all about peace and quiet, I'd never fish somewhere like this. Nobody would. You know? It's mostly about that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I really think we're on for another run. I'll get back to you later when it's quiet down. Well, I've been in this swim a number of times, haven't I? I've tried it. Um, same tactics that I'm using today pretty much, but today just a little bit more refined, just a little bit more because of the sessions that I've done before. But also what I found out in front of that swim, this um, margin basically slopes down like that, all the way down the lake. But it's not flat, it's not a long flat, it goes up and down like this. In front of that swim, goes up a bit and uh, down at the bottom of the, of the drop off it goes up more and goes out so it's actually a huge sort of bump it's, it goes out in the lake so that's where the right hand rod is plays perfectly it's just beyond that swim actually uh, not in front of it but you know so yeah and uh, closing up once again in that bait soak definitely brings the fish into the swim because every body that's going in is dropping a load of bait soap into the swim and as it goes down, excuse me, it's just seeping off the boil, washing off the boil and of course getting in the water column which is what you want. The little things. She's now toasty. Mm. 
good. Brand new noise. Road saw. That's what you want. The wind is veered round to the south south east. To be honest with you, I don't think that's going to make a great deal of difference. It's going to blow itself out by this evening and then go back round to the southwest tomorrow. Um, it is quiet at the moment. I'm expecting to see a few fish start topping soon. Uh, last night it was like four or five, six o'clock, and I was showing out there. But I'll be staying until after dark again. Um, keep giving that a go. See if I get a run after dark. I often do. But um, at the moment, I'm not. Yesterday and today, uh, fish early on, and then nothing. They don't like being caught. When you've got a lot of fish in a lake, uh, and they're used to being in a shop, when one gets caught, that wind is chilly, but then it's coming from the east. We're due to get a little bit of sunshine around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and then it'll get dark. Yesterday's temperature didn't get above 10 degrees. I don't think it has today either. The weather's definitely turned. Well, I've got to be honest, it's been hell here for the last few hours. They've been well busy up there, but they've stopped now. I'll tell you. I fell asleep as well, just drifted off, not a good sleep, but you know, the snooze. So, can't just roll way out there, a few fish have shown here and there, but nothing much. We might get another one before dark, you never know. I do like this time of day. You know, it's all now compressing up to dark and that bit be just after it, you know. That bit before, a bit after it. It's a time at this time of year on some waters where they, they you know, all of a sudden they'll switch on. I mean, it doesn't happen every night. But this time of year I can remember I've had some really good evenings actually. It's funny because uh, Summertime, you can't catch them in the evening, but come this time of year, and uh, it sort of comes into its own, you know, it's well worth staying. Not too many fish rolling this evening, uh, just one or two, usual place, right out in the middle there. There's also another spawn up on the wires. <laughs> I knew that belongs to. I think that was them lads that came last night. Just before dark, a couple of them come walking along with an assortment of wheelbarrows and kit, bags. <laughs> Obviously dead keen because it must have been a cold night last night. I wouldn't have fancied staying out in it. It was clear, cold. It's not been a bad week, has it? Really, two fish. I think uh, if you look through the book, you, you see. Everybody's blanking, which, you know, I do find strange because normally at this time of year they, they tend to feed, you know, throughout the day, um, almost everywhere, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's a strange one, but I'm pretty sure they took a hammer in this year, and, you know, the fish that I've caught yesterday and today, I've got signs of hook marks from this year, so, you know. There's only so many times that a fish will be caught in, in a year. And, and if you've got, you know, 80% of the fish being caught, 
70% of the fish been caught, 60% of the fish been caught. That really doesn't leave too many. Uh, and these are the ones that are catchable, of course, because not all fish are catchable. We've all found that out. So it's diminishing returns. But this time of year, with the fact that they're, they're going on this feed normally and conditions are so right for them to, you know, and there's that final explosion of food, it kind of, you know, balances it out. So, you, you know, you can sneak a few, but it really has been difficult on here. So I'm really, really quite chuffed that I've managed to get a couple out this week. And especially that one today, that was a chunk, wasn't it?